Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a concrete slab. And this slab is actually going to be for what's called a tiny house. And if you guys don't know what a tiny house is, it's just for a really, really small house that uh, is pretty popular nowadays. You could check that out. You could, you could search for that on YouTube and you'd see all kinds of videos about tiny houses. So this one is actually going to be 16 by 24. So I'm going to show you how we pour this slab today. Now we formed all this up. It's actually a six inch thick concrete slab and the edges have been thickened to 12 inches which we used a two by 12 for that. And as you can see, we put styrofoam down under, under the slab and that's just to help keep the floor a little bit warmer. And then we got wire mesh for reinforcement and we got some what's called slab bolsters under the wire to help hold the wire up into the concrete. Now we're using a 3500 PSI concrete today with, we also have microfiber mesh in the concrete and I put that in all my floors. And that's just a, an added reinforcement and it just helps minimize any shrinkage cracking in, in the concrete. So we're pouring about a six inch slump here today and if you've watched any of my other videos you know that I always use a water reducer in my concrete and the water reducer allows me to pour a little bit looser concrete without hurting the integrity of the strength of the concrete so we don't have to use that much water if you use a lot of water in your concrete you you just weaken it and it's more likely to crack on you so the water reducer allows us to pour the concrete a little looser without adding water now it's the fall this time here. It's a little chilly out and you can see you might see a little steam coming off the concrete. That's because the water in the concrete is warm. So the concrete temperature is a lot warmer than the air temperature. And what Luke's doing is Luke's putting some rebar around the edges just to help reinforce the edges a little bit. And we like to wet set this. That way we know that he's going to push that down about two or three inches. So we know it's not sitting on the bottom. And We'll do that all the way around the perimeter of the slab as we pour this thing. So we're getting most of the slab poured out. And then we'll get the rebar in the edges. And then we'll mag float the edges. Luke's got his, what's called a Darby there. Actually, that's a really big mag float. That one's about 30 inches long. So he's going to mag float those edges smooth. Hey, for you guys that are just first watching me and first finding my videos, my name's Mike Day. I own Days Concrete Floors. This is my channel. My channel is all about concrete flat work. So slabs, floors, stamp concrete, stain and concrete, all kinds of different types of flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I come up with a, a couple videos a week. And if you if you like this kind of video, then please hit the like button too. So you can see Luke Magan the edges out and we always do this before we screed the concrete it just it makes screeding a little bit easier it gives us something to go by he's matching you know we set the top of the form to grade when we shot the slab when we formed it so he's magging the concrete right to the top of the form getting the edges nice and smooth and then you can see this we have the screed sitting right there on the ground right here in front of the slab that's a 14 foot screed and this is a 16 foot wide slab so we're gonna have to pass the screed back and forth a little bit when we screed it you'll see how we do that in a minute here now we could get a 16 foot screed we just I just don't happen to have one that long they do make them that long but uh, we we kinda like the 14 footer so we'll just use that one and and just move it back and forth as we screed the concrete off we don't like to pour out all the concrete in the slab and you know for you guys that don't pour concrete much you know you, there's no reason to pour the whole thing out and then if you end up too high then you got to shovel it all out over the edge you know the concrete driver will wait a little bit as long as you're not too slow so just get most of it poured out on something small like this then you can screed it off and you can see what, what we're doing is kick screeding and so Luke will go a little bit and then he'll kind of slide it over to me and then I'll go a little bit and we're using the that wet pad that we just mag floated as our guide to go by in which is also the same as the top of the form and we're getting that last p 
piece of rebar in on that edge so we can go a little bit further. And Darren's raking the concrete out for us. He's making sure it doesn't get too low and that it's not too high. He's just, he's trying to keep it so when Luke and I are screeding, we're only pulling back, you know, maybe about an inch of concrete, maybe a little less than an inch as we screed. That way we don't have to keep stopping. And as we, as we screed, you know, we're just kicking our feet in to fill in our boot tracks as we move our way backwards. Yeah, so we got that section done. Who, who else out there has heard of a tiny house? You know, let me know down in the comments if you've ever heard of that or if you know somebody who has one. Um, these owners, they're going to build their own house here by themselves. And they're just trying to save as much money as they can. This was just one part of it that they didn't dare tackle by themselves. So that's why they hired us to do it. They wanted a really good flat foundation to work off from when they built their house. There we go, we're pouring out. And we're gonna get just about the rest of that piece poured out. We're gonna leave a, a little bit of it open at the end, just in case we are high. So we don't have to make a mess on the outside of this thing. Luke's putting that la last piece of rebar in. And then we'll get those edges magged. And I'm gonna stop bull floating here. And what the bull float does is the bull float just pushes down the rocks in the aggregate and it brings up the paste to smoothen the surface off so when we go to finish this thing we're actually going to power trial this and make it nice and smooth it just makes the power trial a lot easier now for you guys out there who are thinking of doing their own slab or you want to learn how to do your own slab I got a course down in the description of the the video notes where you can you can get my course and I go through all the steps on how to form it up how to pour it, how to finish it, and everything. It takes you step by step right through how to do a slab just like this. So you could check that out down in the description of the video. You can see how smooth that bull float makes it. And it just makes it a lot easier to finish. The tools we're using here too, guys, that bull float, the screed, you know, the things with the, those come alongs we use to rake the concrete around, the mag floats. I have all those tools down in the description too. If, you, if you're looking to, you know, maybe buy some of those tools or if you need some of those tools, you can just click on that link and it'll take you right to it. Yeah, you can see I switched over to screeding with Darren now. So we, we all screed alike, so it's pretty easy to screed with each other. We all been doing it so long. So all we need is just a little bit more. We're going to have him put a little bit in the chute and then we're going to scrape the chute down. Fill that one little area up and then we can finish screeding this thing. How many of you guys out there like pouring concrete? You know, you don't do it for a living, but you like you, you just like doing stuff yourself and you like to learn how to do this stuff let me know down in the comments if you like these slab videos let me know that too you know we do all kinds of slabs we, i don't know we do maybe a hundred of them a year so all different sizes houses garages storage sheds you name it we do it propane tank slabs you know air conditioner slabs generator slabs we do all kinds of them so if you guys want to see more of that stuff let me know down there and uh for you guys, you know, thinking of starting your own business, I also, there's a link down in the description also where you can give me your email. I got a program I'm working on right now to help you guys that want to learn how to start your own business doing this kind of stuff. So I know when I started out, I was, you know, in between 19 and 20 years old, and I didn't really have a clue to how to run a business, how to start a business or anything like that. All I knew was I could pour concrete. I could pour it and finish it. I could do the work, but I didn't know anything about being in business, so I really learned the hard way, and you know, it took me a long time to figure that out and do it right, so I wanna, I'm coming up with a, like an eight-week program that's going to help you guys 
from you know get started and figure out how to do things the right way and not have to learn from all your mistakes like I did so you know sign up down there and uh, when I have that thing ready I'll let you guys know and you can figure out if it's something you might want to do so there yeah, we're just going around that one pipe in the whole slab <laughs> they put one pipe in here they're gonna do all their plumbing above grade so they just have that one water line in there like I said they just hired me to do the concrete I didn't do I don't do the excavation gravel stuff uh, we just specialize in concrete so that stuff's all done when we show up we just show up we put up the forms you know we set them all to grade we square them up set them to grade put the wire in put the styrofoam in so we do the prep work for the slab and then we do the pouring and the finishing for the slab and that's it that's what people hire us to do we're just too busy doing that we do that we do that stuff every day so that's why I, I never had to get into doing the gravel or the prep work there was just too much of the concrete work to have to worry about doing the prep work also so you know I work with a, a handful of excavators that I like that do good work and I recommend those guys all the time so that's just the way we do it you know some of you guys might you might like doing the the, the gravel work so you could do that and the concrete work you know that would be a, I could definitely be in business doing that stuff if I wanted to there's a, there's enough work for that out there we just we just enjoy doing concrete every day so that's why we do that So we're going to finish this slab up and then uh, again you guys if you want to learn how to do slabs like this the links in the video links down in the description check it out now what Darren's putting some anchor bolts in now this is how we set anchor bolts we just we wet set them in roughly where we think they need to go if there's and if someone wants a specific place they need to go then I tell them they need to be there and mark it out for us and we'll set them otherwise than that we just put them every four or five feet and if one's in the wrong place they just cut it off and then they'll drill in and lag it in that way but hey if you want to watch some more videos on slabs check out the two that are popping up on the screen right now and like I said like the video if you like it and subscribe if you're not a subscriber thanks we'll see you on the next one